What should you expect when you're going on a cruise and there's a hurricane out there? I actually just went on a cruise and experienced this for myself. And today, we're going to talk about the big things you should know about what it's like when there's a hurricane out there up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Going on a cruise ship during hurricane season means there's a chance that a storm could impact your vacation. And when it does, there's all sorts of possibilities. So I thought it'd be helpful to give you a real world example of what it's like if you're on a cruise ship during a hurricane. While I sailed on Royal Caribbean's Allure of the Seas during Hurricane Ian, I found myself unexpectedly having to dodge the storm as the ship got out of Florida right before the storm was projected to hit and safely away during the worst of the impact. Being on a cruise ship while there's a hurricane active near home brings a lot of emotions and it can lead to all kinds of scenarios you really never imagined when you booked that cruise or even in the weeks leading up to the sailing. So what is it like when you're on hurricane and what sort of issues could you face if a storm ends up in the way of your ship? I think a lot of people, if they go on a cruise during the summer and fall, can run into this particular scenario because, of course, hurricanes are pretty common in the Caribbean this time of year. First and foremost, you can expect more questions than answers in those days before a cruise when there's a hurricane active. Once forecasters see a hurricane was going to form, they produce an early track that seemed to put the storm in the way of our particular sailing. We were booked on a six-night Western Caribbean cruise out of Fort Lauderdale, and the storm would be blocking our way in one way or another in terms of going from the east to the west. As anyone that deals with hurricanes a lot will tell you, the forecast for tropical storms are quite variable and prone to changes that greatly benefit or penalize your situation. One day, it might look like your ship is going to be clear of any issues, and the next, it looks like that storm is going to be right in your way and you're stuck. Unfortunately, no one knows the answers of what exactly will happen when you're many days before the storm is set to hit. Beyond maybe a 48 or 72 hour window, tropical storm predictions can really vary with a lot of different possibilities. As it happened with Hurricane Ian, the models were rarely in agreement, and most of the time there were wide arcs of possibilities. This leaves vacationers unsure of what to do. In the final days before my cruise, my wife and I still had a few moments trying to decide if our vacation was still on. Could we safely make it to our embarkation port? Where would our ship go? Would we be better off staying at home to manage our house and mitigate damage? And would getting home be impacted by the storm? In our case, when we drove down to Fort Lauderdale from Orlando, which is where I live, the storm was only predicted to be a Category 2 and headed for the Florida Panhandle. As it turned out, it would be a Category 4 storm and hit around Fort Myers in South Florida. Essentially, you can't expect every question you might have to be answered. And you may have to have a sense of que sera sera as it pertains to going on a cruise. We made our decision to cruise based on the best information that we had at the time we were to depart and would have to trust in the cruise line to provide information and changes as needed. Now, the most common scenario when there's a hurricane is for the cruise line to change your itinerary and avoid the storm. And certainly having a different itinerary is pretty commonplace. In our case, Allure of the Seas dropped the visit to Roatan so we could instead sail the long way around Cuba to Mexico and circumnavigate the island as a way of avoiding Hurricane Ian's path but still making our way west. Alert ended up being safely behind Hurricane Ian, slowly moving west as the storm cleared out of the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico. While skipping Rotan is not ideal, and I know there were a lot of people who were upset by the fact that we couldn't go there anymore, it's something you have to assume with any cruise on any sailing. Itinerary changes are not uncommon, regardless if it's hurricane season or not. So if you're sitting out there saying, oh, okay, I'm good, man. I'm not going on a cruise in hurricane season. I'll have no problem getting to my itinerary. Keep in mind, itinerary changes can happen for a variety of reasons, and it's not just hurricane season in which your itinerary could change. There were definitely a lot of people who were upset about not being able to visit Roatan, and honestly, that's to be expected because no one wants to be disappointed. It was actually pretty amusing in the sense that when I talked to some crew members anecdotally, there were actually some guests who voiced not only their disappointment were going to Roatan, but they really questioned why the ship wasn't going right into the hurricane in order to make it into Roatan. I just... Cannot fathom that idea of wanting to go so badly to Roatan that you'd want to go into the hurricane on a cruise ship while at sea, but everybody's different. Also, during this week, Liberty of the Seas had a few itinerary changes. At first, they were flip-flopping her schedule to bypass Mexico and go to Grand Cayman, but then when Grand Cayman closed due to the storm, they switched it up again and moved her to Mexico. So itinerary changes can definitely happen, but don't expect your cruise to be canceled because of a hurricane. I know a lot of first-time cruisers will often wonder aloud probably on Facebook, that is, if their cruise is going to be canceled. And it's clear, in my opinion, that it is extremely unlikely a cruise will be totally canceled due to a hurricane. Sailings can be extended or shortened 
but Royal Caribbean very rarely cancels an entire sailing. That isn't to say it's never been done before, but time and time again, we see ships getting rerouted and extended instead of being canceled outright. Mariner of the Seas, which also sailed during this time, went from a five-night cruise to a seven-night cruise. Independence of the Seas also got an additional day, and in both cases, the issue was Port Canaveral was closed, and that prevented the ship from getting back into port. If your cruise is extended or shortened, you can expect extra onboard credit, and actually, if you purchase any unlimited packages like, you know, drink packages or dining packages or Wi-Fi, Royal Caribbean will honor those packages for the extended duration of your cruise. So you might be wondering, well, what is it like if you're on a cruise ship and your cruise is extended because of a hurricane? While my cruise only had an itinerary change, other cruise ships, as we just talked about, had to stay out to sea longer because of the closure in Port Canaveral. One of our writers on our sister site cruise blog, Jody Grundig, was on the Disney Wish during this time, and her sailing ended up going from a four-night cruise to, I believe, a six-night cruise, and it may have even gone seven nights, I forget exactly, and I talked to her after the fact about what it was like, and she said, quote, there were cheers on board, so most people seemed to be pretty excited for the extra day. A few people were upset because of the commitments at home, end quote. Now, for Jody, the safety was the most important thing out there. She said, it wasn't unexpected, so I was just glad to be safe after the initial panic of moving my flight, which was fairly easy, end quote. As you might imagine, having a cruise extended means a lot of logistical changes to get back home. Some people can drive home, like myself, but a lot of people have to fly back, and that means changing your flights and, of course, plans you have back at home, right? Dog sitters and work schedules and whatnot. According to Jody, Disney actually offered people who needed to make phone calls free internet to make those changes in flight arrangements. Luckily for Jody, she was able to switch her flights pretty easily because it was over a weekend and didn't have to worry too much about getting back to work and all of that. But I know you're also wondering, okay, well, if you're on a cruise ship during a hurricane and Matt, your cruise ship was really close to Hurricane Ian, not in the storm, but close, how bad are the sea conditions while there's a storm at sea? And I think most people understand that cruise ships don't sail into hurricanes, but the most common question I received during my sailing was how bad are the waves? Not only do cruise ships avoid the path of a hurricane, they'll chart a course with the optimal sea conditions to avoid the worst of any rough seas. Hurricane or not, there can be motion in the ocean, so to speak, so no cruise is immune from the waves. However, the reality is the cruise can be quite smooth in terms of wave height. When a ship changes itinerary, they also have the opportunity to sail waters far away from the storm. In addition, ships can sail closer to land to find a protected waterways that can lessen the effect of the seas. During my cruise, our ship went around Cuba, and by the time we made our way westward again, the ship stayed far enough away from Hurricane Ian to keep everything quite calm. We rarely felt much motion, and the sea conditions ended up being extremely calm. In the case of the Disney Wish that Jody was on earlier, that ship went out to sea further east in the Bahamas to avoid even the furthest aspects of the storm there. Typically, a hurricane's forward speed averages about 15 to 20 miles an hour. Hurricane Ian was moving at less than 10 miles an hour, and cruise ships, by the way, can sail faster than hurricanes can move, which gives them the ability to outrun the changing path of any storm. So the bottom line is, it is extremely unlikely you're going to go anywhere near the storm, number one. And number two, the cruise line is going to be able to find the most optimal waters that is out there. But how do they do that? How do they know all these things? Because this is a cruise line, and hurricanes are, you know, unpredictable, difficult storms to predict. Well, Royal Caribbean has a secret weapon up their sleeve, and that is they actually have their own chief meteorologist, James Van Fleet. Unlike every other cruise line, Royal Caribbean has its own chief meteorologist who not only provides each ship and the cruise line importing guidance on the weather, but he also shares insight with guests. Mr. Van Fleet has over 20 years of experience as a meteorologist in television, covering an array of locations from Texas to Florida. And he'll actually post daily video updates on social media, explaining the latest forecasts and what he thinks is possible. He'll also talk about various ships, demonstrate where the ship is located, what to expect, and most importantly, how they're keeping safely away from the hurricane. In the days before my cruise, my mind was put at ease a lot of times because we listened to his updates on the internet. And during the cruise, we got information about what the storm was doing and how our ship was dealing with track changes. At the height of the hurricane imminent threat to Florida, Mr. Van Fleet took to answering questions from passengers on both video and social media. And it was a huge relief, not only to myself, but I know a lot of people who took solace in that. And I mean this with the least amount of pretentiousness possible, but I really do feel bad for people on other cruise lines who don't have access to this kind of information because it must be mentally anguishing to not have the sort of information Mr. Van Fleet provides. While he may not know more than anyone else as to what the storm will do, his many years of experience as a meteorologist in Florida 
gives him a lot of insight into the nuances of tropical storms that can put many minds at ease, including myself. So overall, going on a cruise during hurricane season means that you're probably still going to go on your cruise. Your itinerary could change. Don't expect the cancellation. And there are going to be some questions that are going to linger throughout the sailing. But the bottom line is you're going to be safe. You're not going to encounter terrible weather. And more likely, you're going to have a great time. Let me know in the comments what questions I can still answer about what it's like to go on a cruise during a hurricane. I'm looking forward to those questions there. And let me know your experiences cruising during hurricane season. Looking forward to reading those as well. While you're below our video, hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.